Welcome to the Hour of Truth Ministry. Your message will be brought to you today by the Honorable Minister Demetrius Robinson Sr. Where you and Jesus Christ are the most important people we know. You know, oftentimes as Christians, we are constantly reminded of our dark past, our trials, our tribulations and the stripes we acquired along the way of upholding the Christian flag. So, how's everyone feeling today? Let's say it together. Kept by the power of God. Kept by the power of God. Today's text will be coming from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. St. John chapter 1, verse 1. Our subtext will be announced. Genesis Genesis 1 1 reads, In the beginning God created heaven and earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's John chapter 1 and verse 1. Here's some food for thought. In the laws of physics, to create an explosion, one needs to split the atom. Here's a vivid metaphor. Atoms represents the father. Protons can be considered the mother. The neutrons can be considered the offsprings. Created after an inadvertent eruption of the atom and the proton gives birth to the neutron which are the seeds of humanity. However, Egyptology states that it was sometimes said that Adam was originally a serpent. A form to which he was said to be destined to return when the world ends, only changing into a human during its existence. Furthermore, according to Egyptology, Adam was the name given to the sun, creation of the world, and rulers of the gods. His appearance was rarely human and used the pivot as a crown or as one of his many totem animals. He was sometimes illustrated as a black bull carrying a sun dish between his horns. In the creation mythology, Adam is originally the creator. He created himself or rose out of nothing and created the first gods. Shook in the, in the, in the nuts to nut from his, his spittle, which is from the word with God, with Jesus in his story that he gave sight to a blind man, he used spittle, which was spit, that he formed into a word from a thought to give sight to the blind man. The Mennonites, the Mephonites creation meant put him as the first creation apart who simply said his name, and he became into being. This mythological passage portrayed the idea that God was with us since the creation of humanity, and thus illustrates the fact that we knew of him at some point in our dark history. We had free will to do the things that we are accustomed to. The idea of worship was deeply rooted in our hearts and our minds. But because of sin, our lifeline or umbilical cord was disengaged from God and caused us to be distant from Him and Jesus Christ. Our lives are similar to that of Cain, Abel, Jeremiah, and Saul. Before they perhaps found Christ on their own personal road to Damascus, where they reestablished a relationship with God. Saul found Jesus after a long extensive career of persecuting Christians being in bondage to Satan. Like St. Paul, as we have come to know him today, a mighty man of God who was blinded by the lights of condemnation and transformed into a new man after being convicted by faith and knowing the truth that the devil is a liar and rebuked him in the name of Jesus. Many of us have followed the wrong path at some point in our lives. 
worshiping self and Satan and not knowing that we have been condemned to surely die if we did not begin to separate ourselves from the negative by implementing positive changes in our lives through steps and stages. Adding things that are, by adding things that are just and righteous in God's sight in our lives. I am a firm believer that sin is sin and love is a company of all sorts of things that are good. However, positive can only excel with positive people that influence that are influence influential in our lives by building upon what is acceptable in the sight of God. As Jesus Christ, as he has instructed us to live by his examples. We need strong families, strong men and women with Christian morals and values that can be exemplified even at the cost of their lives for their neighbors. To live a life of, for Christ, one must hold fast to the Sermon on the Mount that is illustrated in St. Matthew chapter 5 and 7 through 7 as a standing code of ethics for which Christians must uphold as members of the Christian faith. This means picking up your cross and following Jesus. To be an example as he was for you and I. Being a member of the body of cross, Christ calls for all to endure the suffering, sacrifice, service of being a light of the communities we serve. One, unlike the unbelievers. As Christians, we must endure all risks, persecution, rejections, and call on Jesus 24 7, 7 days, 365 days a year. Our lives have become reckless and we are consciously intoxicated in a conscious state of mind. Meaning that when we have lost control of our lives to alcohol and drugs and the will of Satan, we're no longer in control of our lives, but our lives are being controlled by the unconscious, subconscious thinking of the Father of all sin. It is not until we seek counsel from a higher power, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we finally realize that we are playing Russian roulette with our lives. It is by the grace of God that we are still here to tell our personal stories. Jesus praised the one out of 100 of the sheep in a parable. Everyone has a prophetic message of hope to build bridges through faith and salvation for others to follow. Nonetheless, riches and wealth will fall on deaf ears in the last days. Be ye of sound minds and judgment, not to judge others. Jesus said, if the sinner wants to come, let them come. God loves you. He has designed and orchestrated a plan with his divine hands. Before we knew ourselves, teach your children the things of the past by binding the precepts of the Lord on their hearts and branding it in their talk and their walk. By training them in the way that you grow to be ambassadors of your home. The Bible teaches us that it's not so much as what goes into the mouth, but what proceeds from the mouth that defiles the temple, which dwells in each of us. I believe that this is what Jesus meant when he asked the Pharisees to tear down the temple and he will rebuild it in three days. Set aside a day of fast to clean the body of deadly toxins and cleanse your mind through thorough intercessory prayers to attain solitude with God. And the toxins in our minds and our bodies distorts and defiles the temple and asserts false thoughts and truths or heretical thoughts that if untreated will spread like cancer throughout the body. Repeat after me. My body is my temple. There is no other like it. I promise to love and to care for my temple as Jesus' precepts instructed me. My body cannot rest until my mind does and my mind cannot rest until my body does. 
I will be a gentleman and a lady of a scholar at all times, being humble and meek, as a main ingredient to acquire patience for the things beyond my comprehension in this secular world. In Genesis 3, verse 1 through 7 reads, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the God. And the woman said to the serpent, May we eat the fruit of the tree of the God. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the God, and God said, God said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Here we see Adam and Eve were being tested by the serpent. It is clear here that they knew that the fruit were, allowed, were, were not allowed and what was off limits and a punishment that surely that will surely follow. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the days you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband what her he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they saw fig leaves together, they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. In these verses, the serpent is planting the seed of temptation, which opens the floodgate for choices to be born into the God. Furthermore, based on the scripture, the eyes were not open, yet the serpent said that after partaking of the fruit, they will be like God, knowing good and evil. The text implying that they were without sin, but after partaking of the forbidden tree, sin was unleashed into the world. Thus, it assures us that God has always been in the midst of our lives since the creation of the world to test our strength and our will to be obedient to his word and to obey his instructions as he commanded in the days of Adam and Eve in the God. God can take on many different forms, even of a serpent. Turn to Exodus, those of you that have Bibles. Exodus 4, chapter 4, verse 2 through 5. To reinforce his precepts, God has supremacy over everything, above and below, in our universe, meaning whether it is good or bad. He has the power and authority over heaven, earth, and hell, which includes Satan and his army. The Hebrew name Adam means a man ruddy, as we study Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, she means Eve was taken out of man. However, the Hebrew word translated in this particular verse as man is not Adam, but Ish, like the Egyptian name Adam. And Ish also conveys a sense of both unity and totality. It is commonly translated.